Okay, so I've drained out the uh, fuel tank and man, this stuff is like brown. Uh, it's like three or four years old because this thing's been sitting for three years. It had a bunch of fuel in it and uh, it smells like Varsol. So it doesn't smell anything like gas. There's absolutely no octane rating in it. Basically, this is uh, garbage, guys. So what we have, guys, is uh, a contaminated liquid uh, disposal at uh, one of our local automotive shops. We bring them all of our old oil, all of our old uh, fuel, and they dispose of it. That's what we do with uh, all of our old fuel. We don't just dump it out. And, uh, you know, like we got Varsol containers um, in there with uh, paint and everything, so we actually dispose of it properly. Okay, so we took the uh, fuel tank off and uh, rinsed it out with some degreaser and a little bit of water from the hose. Uh, so I'm going to uh, drain that out and let it dry. I had to uh, take the whole fuel tank and the rails off from the frame. They were just a couple of uh, 3 8 bolts with uh, 7 16 nuts on the end of it. I had to get that off because uh, these little straps on the fuel tank wouldn't come off. But now that those uh, rails and the fuel tank are off, it'll actually uh, give me a little easier access to uh, take out this uh, old uh, battery because uh, when we did charge that uh, overnight, uh, I came out here this morning and it only had about 6.3 volts onto it so uh, there's probably a couple dead cells in there so now I can just uh, unplug uh, these wires here move that harness out of the way and just pull the battery straight out so we can get a new one in there okay so I got a piece of tape over the uh, the intake and the exhaust port and uh, before I put the car back on now that we got it cleaned and uh, now that the fuel tank has uh, had a chance to dry out uh, I'm gonna hit this with a degreaser uh, both sides of the engine bay here and then uh, I'm gonna pressure wash it just to get all that grease off of the engine and then uh, this thing should be good to go I'll probably spray in behind here and uh, get it all cleaned up so for the uh, five minutes that it took me to uh, wash this thing all that grease is now off of it over here it was just covered in grease so you can see nice and clean now and not only does that make it look a lot nicer it's easier to work on you know you don't have grease all over the place especially putting a nice clean carburetor onto a, a, a greasy engine's no good and if you have a bunch of grease over your engine uh, your engine's going to run hotter because uh, it won't have a chance to radiate that heat off of the side of the uh, the engine because you got uh, all that grease on it so like i said guys you just want to put a little piece of tape here and uh, we use a 2000 psi pressure washer and uh, this Gorilla Tape here, you guys can see it, it sticks pretty good. And uh, you know, I was hitting the pressure washer all along this area here and uh, it never came off. So this is probably the best tape you can use. It's called Gorilla Tape and I like to use it. But uh, yeah, so now we're ready to put the carb back on. Okay, so when you're putting this back together, you wanna hook up your choke linkage, then your throttle linkage with the spring then you want to plug your uh, crankcase breather tube onto the carburetor because uh, it might be tricky to get that on once you've bolted the carb up so just slip it on and then you should be able to uh, rotate the carburetor into position to get uh, both your top and bottom bolts on then we'll put the muffler on afterwards because remember guys you won't be able to get at that bottom bolt if the muffler's on and i had the uh, bracket that holds the carb on the wrong side when i was putting it together i bolted it onto here and that just goes back here and then down to the bottom right there okay and once you have your uh, carburetor all bolted up now's a good time to uh, check your linkage here so your linkage rotates this guy so your throttle cable comes from there goes right down to here it pivots an arm here which then pushes out your choke lever and then your throttle cable that goes back to there so what you want to do is when this lever is all the way in the up position you want to make sure that the choke is engaged just like that and then when you bring it down to the run position it opens it up and then when you bring it all the way down to the lowest position it pushes your throttle all the way forward to kill out the engine okay next up is our muffler so we're going to be tightening these two bolts don't forget your gasket in between and then there's that one bolt over there on the front of the machine. And then once you get your muffler all bolted up, don't forget to uh, bend those tabs back over top to prevent them from uh, vibrating out. Okay, next thing, I'm gonna be putting the uh, fuel tank back on by uh, bolting up the uh, rails there on uh, either side. And uh, if somebody wants to see it run, uh, then I'll hook up the eliminator. You know, just use the battery booster to fire it up 
then we can disconnect that, drive it around, cut the grass, whatever needs to be done. And then whoever buys it can uh, put their own battery into it. And uh, this air filter needs to be replaced. I have the uh, air filter housing in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, about to be put on to clean. Um, I've taken out all the little parts and pieces and whatnot uh, and just uh, wiped them down. But uh, this air filter, normally we have these in stock. Unfortunately, I don't have any in stock, but uh, you guys can see it's just like it's falling apart when this foam gets uh, old it gets really brittle and uh, just starts to chip apart so we're gonna get uh, a new one of those and we should have it in the next couple days well guys I uh, really wasn't planning on doing this but I had to remove the cover because uh, we weren't getting spark so we had spark originally and then we lost it and then we had it again so I decided just to uh, remove the shroud here and uh, replace it with one of these uh, Amazon China coils and uh, boy did that ever solve the problem so here's the uh, the old coil here I pulled that off, I just uh, snipped off the wire at the bottom. So I'm still gonna have to run a kill wire from here either to a push button stop. That shouldn't be a big deal because that's only one wire. Again, we're gonna have to put the shroud on. So you guys wanna make sure that uh, your wire isn't that long so that you end up getting big spools uh, where it could get caught up in the flywheel or get pinched in between something. So I've run it down underneath the carburetor along the back there and then it comes out down here. So what I'm gonna do is, again, because I don't want this getting caught up in the steering, because when you steer to the right, this comes down. So if this wire got caught up in here, and then I steer to the left, and that thing pulls back, it could uh, bunch up and uh, basically cut my kill wire in half, and then you wouldn't be able to shut off your machine. So uh, once I get the panel back on, the shroud here, uh, what I'm gonna do is take uh, some electrical tape and uh, just kind of uh, tape it up and uh, possibly uh, zip tie it somewhere where it's safe and out of the way. Now on other ones uh, that I've done before, I've done just a push button stop. The customer wanted like a push button stop. So basically to do that, you just need uh, a little switch and uh, you hook one end to ground. So you could uh, take like, a, oh, I don't know, a self-tapping screw, go right into your frame. That's one wire. And then the other wire goes down to your coil so that when you press and hold the button, or if you just flick it uh, on or off, then essentially you'll have uh, an on or off uh, kill switch. But we got some fresh fuel into it now and uh, I'll fire it up and uh, get it running for a video. So there you have it guys, coil swap made the difference on this thing so now we got spark all the time. When I shut off the key switch it did nothing, again that's because uh, there's no kill wire hooked up yet so I just uh, throttled it down to the point where the uh, throttle shut off here and uh, we can adjust that but I'm still going to hook up a kill wire. So uh, let me go ahead and do that, I'll run the wire, get the shroud back on and then uh, now that we know this thing runs uh, we can flip it up and have a look at the deck. And now that I know that it runs, we're gonna go ahead and paint uh, our shroud and uh, our air box cover there, um, just to make it look a little better. So we'll get a little bit of uh, frog tape here, the green stuff, cover all the uh, stickers there, and our uh, model number right there. And then uh, we'll get some paint onto that, let it dry, and then uh, I'll put that back together. Well guys, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love Stens Canada. So we order all our parts through Stens, and uh, as long as you order $150 worth of parts, you get free shipping. And uh, sure enough, the parts we ordered yesterday are in today. So I just opened up the box. You guys can see we got all kinds of air filters. I need this for a Craftsman uh, rider that I'm gonna be working on shortly. We got uh, all kinds of uh, uh, sediment bowl gaskets. Uh, we got Zama carburetor kits. Uh, I need that for uh, this guy right here, that one right there. So uh, that's a Zama carburetor kit. I'll be able to install that. And uh, the main thing is this right here, guys. So we got a brand new air filter. And uh, I don't know, I think this was like uh, two or three bucks, but uh, we'll be able to put a brand new air filter into our air filter housing there once I get that all painted up. And we got this thing all painted up too. So with the shroud and the air box painted black, it looks a lot nicer. And this is what your uh, engine should look like, guys. So uh, after a little bit of uh, black paint, you know, like I said, we just taped over the, the stickers there. But uh, I think it turned out quite nice. Freshens everything up just a little bit. And uh, like I said, we got that wire kill wire ran back. I've still left this uh, loose because uh, if a customer wants to put a battery in there then uh, they can they can just slide it under and then bolt this on top and it makes things 
uh, a lot easier. And uh, looks like we got a 5 8 deck belt here. This thing looks to be in uh, you know, pretty decent condition. It's not uh, torn or uh, frayed, so we don't have to replace that. So there's uh, a little bit of uh, saved money without having to replace that, which is nice. Okay, so we took the deck off and uh, we just pressure washed it with our pressure washer here. And uh, we'll get the blades all sharpened up in a minute. And then uh, we'll undercoat this thing and uh, it should be ready to go back onto the machine. Okay, so this deck was in uh, pretty good condition. Uh, so after we power washed it, we uh, flipped it up here on the uh, workmate bench and uh, hit it with a little bit of Krylon Color Master. Uh, this stuff was on sale. It's like, a, I don't know, a turquoise color. Uh, really cheap. Reminds me of the 70s and the, the 80s and all those neon colors. But uh, yeah, you guys can see we painted it up and uh, it only needed a minor weld repair here on the side so we just took a, a little bit of sheet metal put it up underneath and then uh, welded it in uh, again it doesn't have to look pretty it just has to uh, you know cover the machine and uh, make sure no rocks fly out on the side there but uh, yeah this came out all right and again guys because this is a metal deck we've undercoated the bottom of it with some crown rust preventative and as I showed you guys before the uh, deck belt for this machine is in great condition uh, so we're going to uh, reuse that uh, before we put this deck on, we're going to have to remove these guards here so that we can slip the uh, the belt on. Again, because it is a 5 8 belt, it's a little bit thicker than, uh, you know, your normal half inch or uh, th smaller 3 8 belts. Okay, so we ended up uh, putting a brand new battery, installing that in here. That was like 55 bucks because we ended up uh, trading in uh, a core. So you bring in a, a dead battery that doesn't work, and instead of paying like uh, 70 bucks for a a new 12 volt battery you get it for like 55 here in uh, Canada at Canadian Tire so we've reinstalled uh, the mounting bolts for uh, our brackets there that mount our fuel tank on and uh, right now we're just uh, taking the right rear tire off so that we can do uh, a brake job on this guy and I'll show you guys how to fix the brakes Okay, so we got uh, our belt here. Now this belt was uh, laying on top of this deck when we first uh, got this machine and uh, you could see that physically it looks smaller. So what I did was I went to Google and I typed in our serial number which is 5285-3000 and I tried to get mower deck belt lengths. And what ended up coming up was a Noma Dynamark belt reference chart. And you can see it here on the screen. And sure enough, up came the belt that we need for this. It's a 5 8 by 71 inch belt. Okay, so we got the deck on this thing now. Pretty simple, uh, and I'll take you through it. Just the steps that we went through. Okay, so we're just down here by the deck. You guys are going to want to uh, get the deck underneath your machine and hook up your belt. To your engine pulley first okay then you want to make sure that uh, your belt keepers are installed on both sides then go ahead and bolt up your deck to the bracket that comes down from the frame and then go ahead and bolt up that rear bracket to the top of the frame right there with a couple bolts and that's it guys this deck is a pretty simple design so this deck here it's got a up and down you just uh, push on that and you could raise the deck and then for your blade and gauge you just rotate this and your blade is engaged and when you want to uh, disengage your blade you just give it a twist like that guys it's pretty simple so with the deck painted light blue and uh, you know the top that we're not gonna paint other than uh, this little stripe that we did up at the top of light blue it uh, turned out pretty good well that's it for today's video guys we just sold this thing for 375 and we got to go deliver it now if you enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up you can click over here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos be sure to uh, come on back next week as I upload weekly. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.